Hello everyone, my name is Tim Hansen, and today we're going to learn how to configure Capture ATP on a SonicWall Gen 7 Sonic OS 7 firewall. Now, before we launch into things, there's a couple quick items we need to cover first. Number one being, if you haven't already done so, you'll want to pick the data center that Capture ATP is going to send files to when it needs to perform dynamic checks. Essentially opening the file, determining whether it's malicious or not based on the behavior of that file once it's been opened. So to do this, we'll want to head over to the device's licensing under device and licenses. And once there, find Capture Advanced Threat Protection on the list here. And what you'll see is you'll see a little needs info message or indication. And if you click on this message, what you'll get is a little pop-up here that asks you to select a data center. And of course, naturally, you're going to want to select the data center that's nearest to the location the firewall is going to be installed at to cut down on file transfer times to and from there. Okay, and then number two, the... Capture ATP engine is reliant on the firewall's gateway antivirus engine for initially scanning files and ultimately sending the Capture ATP engine suspicious files for evaluation. And what this means is you will want to, of course, ensure that gateway antivirus is set up properly before setting up Capture ATP. The process is pretty straightforward for checking this. We can start off by ensuring antivirus is actually enabled or turned on under policy, security services, and gateway antivirus. This here should be toggled on, and then at a minimum, the protocols for inbound inspection should be toggled on. Okay, so next we'll want to head over to object, match objects, and zones. And we'll want to make sure the Gateway AV column is ticked off for any of the zones you want Capture ATP to inspect files for. Okay, and then lastly, we'll want to head over to Policy and Access Rules. And if I pick just any random access rule, open it up, go to the Security Profile tab, we can see this little DPI toggle button here, which should be turned on since Gateway Antivirus is a... DPI engine component or a component of the DPI engine. What will happen if the DPI toggle button is off is the DPI engine or as a byproduct the gateway antivirus, anti-spire and intrusion prevention engines won't actually scan any traffic or all traffic going through the rule. Okay so now that we've checked off those two items let's take a quick look at what Capture ATP actually does and then we'll go through the actual point and click of setting it up. Okay, now without going into too great detail about the inner workings of Capture ATP, at a high level, files that the Gateway Antivirus Engine cannot match to a known antivirus signature yet are deemed to be suspicious get sent to the Capture ATP Engine. So the Capture ATP Engine receives that file or those files, does some static checks on it to try to validate whether the file is malicious. And then ultimately, if it's still unsure at that point, it can do what we call a dynamic check, which involves sending that file up to our sandbox in the cloud and detonating or executing that file and rendering a verdict based on the behavior of the file itself once it is detonated or executed. Okay, so the settings related to Capture ATP can be found here under Policy, Capture ATP, and Settings. You'll want to ensure first that at a minimum, this little box over here has a check mark on it, which would indicate that the Gateway AV engine is enabled. So go ahead and enable the Capture ATP engine here, and then you'll see a number of settings magically appear below. Okay, and then below we can set the file types to which Capture ATP engine will look at. Personally, I would recommend you enable everything. All right, and the default file size is set to its maximum of 10 megabytes. If we want to, we can exclude an address object or a group of address objects from the engine here. 
And then even if we have files getting triggered by the Capture ATP engine, as a result of a false positive, we can throw the MD5 hash of the file into here and create a file specific exception. And then the behavior while a verdict is being rendered can be selected here. My recommendation would be to block the file download until a verdict is rendered. Because, of course, if you're allowing the download to proceed and then the Capture ATP engine says, hey, wait, this is ransomware, chances are the user already has that file on the hard drive and has opened it. And at that point, it, well, kind of defeats the purpose of Capture ATP. And then below you can create exclusions if you want something to specifically be excluded from the block until verdict behavior. All right, and then at this point our Capture ATP engine is pretty much configured and set up. Now, where do we see the results of file scans or files being sent to Capture ATP? There's a couple different sections. So we can see information, some information here on the dashboard. This is more high level graph type information, of course. If we want specifics, I find it's best to go back under Capture ATP and then go under Scanning History. So here we can see a list of all the files that were scanned. Again, high level. But here it will allow us to click on one of the files if we want to see really verbose details on what Capture ATP did with the file. You'll get limited information if only a static check was performed on the file. Where you get the real verbose details is if that file is sent up to the cloud for a dynamic check. In which case you'll get information about what files are being created, what files the file is trying to edit, what the network activity is, what processes are trying to be spun up, and any changes to the registry being made. Okay, it's pretty neat to see when a malicious file is detected to be able to review exactly what that file is trying to do on the system. All right, and then once again, just keep in mind that Capture ATP is dependent on the Gateway Antivirus Service. So, assuming that the Gateway Antivirus Service is enabled and is ticked off for the appropriate zone, and of course the access rule the traffic is hitting doesn't have the DPI option disabled, Capture ATP should be all set up and running and ready to start reviewing suspicious files. Okay? So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.